Hi, everybody, and welcome to our OSDFCon webinar series. Today, Daniel Beyer is going to talk about FreeTap. So we're really glad you're here, and we hope you're going to learn something today. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Allie Duveen. I'm the event manager at Basis Technology. I'm going to make sure all your questions are answered. So if you have any questions uh, during the presentation or after, uh, obviously, during Q&A, please feel free to ask them throughout, but we most likely will answer them towards the end. To submit a question, just type it into the questions pane of the control panel. The webinar is being recorded, so we're going to email out the link tomorrow to everybody who registered. So if you do find it useful and informative, you can share it with anyone who might be interested. We scheduled the webinar for 45 minutes. After a very brief introduction from me, there will be a presentation and demo and followed by the Q&A session. Now, when the webinar ends, you will be directed to a survey. I would really appreciate it if you could spend just two minutes letting us know your opinion and also other things that you would wanna hear on future webinars. That kind of stuff just helps us learn what you thought of this webinar and what you wanna see in the future. So we would love it if you could help us out with that. As mentioned before, I work for Basis Technology. We've been around for 25 years and our cyber forensics team focuses on building easy to use software for the people who are on the front lines of cyber investigations. We also build Autopsy, which is one of the most popular open source digital forensics tools in existence. And we also make a tool for incident response called Cyber Triage, which is hyper-focused on intrusion-related investigations and it automates as much of the process as possible. So I don't want to talk too long. Um, without further ado, let's get started. I want to introduce you to Daniel Beyer, who works as a security research at Fraunhofer. And a fun fact about Daniel is he is a mountain climber in his free time. So Daniel, I'm passing it over to you. Please take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my webinar talk about free tap decrypting. Oh, what's happening there? Just back to the slides. Um, um, I am welcome, welcome to the webinar talk about FreeTap uh, decrypting. Um, FreeTap is an open source development from uh, me and two colleagues uh, from François Igner and Max Ufer. And it was built because um, when you want to analyze network traffic um, nowadays, it's not that easy. When you look back, back in the past, we had um, our client who was connecting to a server and we want to analyze the network traffic. We just have to monitor it uh, with our favorite tool and um, then we can just see what is sending from the client to the server or vice versa and see it in plain text and can see really what which what kind of data was sending um, there. Um, normally it's a little bit different. Um, when we now want to monitor the network traffic, um, mostly everything is encrypted. And um, when you look then into your favorite uh, tool, you will see, okay, there's some DNS requests, and if you're lucky, it's not encrypted, and then you can at least see what is the server, and maybe um, even the client. But um, you can't see really which kind of data was sending um, there because it's encrypted. Actually, this is quite good that it's encrypted, uh, for, at least for our privacy. But um, when it comes to traffic analysis, it's a problem because uh, when we want to monitor the network traffic, we want to see really what kind of data is sending from the client to the server or from the server to the client. And this is especially a problem <clears throat> when it comes to uh, the traffic analysis of malware because um, there might be some really important data inside this encrypted traffic, uh, for instance, uh, CNC communication or something else, and we can't see it because it's encrypted. And the same is true 
uh, obviously for proprietary protocols because um, there we have the same problem. Maybe we want to ensure that there are um, no privacy issue with the certain application or we want at least to understand this uh, sort of application and its network traffic in order to, for instance, for, to improve our friendly toolkit. And this is to deal with this kind of problem. Um, currently, um, the solution is to run a um, man in the middle proxy. So when we have a um, network connection between the client and the server, and uh, we don't have control over the network, and there's no attack to the TLS communication, and there are um, strong encryption schemes are used, TLS is secure. So we are not able to attack this. But when we have control over the network, we can do a so-called man in the middle attack. And what does it mean? <clears throat> so when we have control over the network, therefore we can ensure that the client is not directly talking to the server. So we intercept the traffic in a way that the client is actually talking to our man in the middle proxy. And um, then our man in the middle proxy can read the traffic in plain text and forward it if you like, or adjust or alter the traffic to the server. And how is the man in the middle proxy doing it? At the beginning of the TLS connection, the client um, is waiting for a server certificate. And um, what we are doing as in, in a man in the middle attack, we just um, use our own certificate uh, and the client, if he's not doing some check, he will trust it, okay, say this is the right server and will communicate with us. And um, that way, we are able again to see all the um, encrypted TLS communication here, encrypted or in plain text, because we have here TLS communication and then after this TLS communication ends, we do a new TLS communication to the server, and we can still see what kind of data uh, was sent. Um, but um, of course, there are um, a lot of companies and developers aware of this problem and develop um, different um, techniques in order to prevent this kind of attack. And one of the most um, um, spread that, um, prevention is certificate pinning. And this means that the client um, has somewhere in its application code uh, the expected certificate pinned. And when we now providing as our man in the middle proxy our certificate, the client is checking it against um, the expected certificate. This could either be the real certificate or just a hash of the expected certificate. And if it's not the same, the connection will abort and we are not able to intercept uh, this traffic. And to deal or to yeah, to deal with this kind of problem, um, we have to disable this um, check for the application we want to analyze or the traffic for the application where we want to do this kind of man in the middle attack. And um, this is usually doing uh, done by attacking um, the target application, which means um, we are hooking. Um, the certificate pinning implementation and ensure that um, the target application is accepting our uh, certificate which we are sending as a man in the middle proxy. And then again, our uh, interception with the man in the middle proxy is working. And to do this kind of attack, of course, we need to, need to have control of this um, target client and um, 
the permissions in order on the system in order to apply the source. But there's another problem when it comes to hooking into this um, application, especially into hooking into this um, certificate implementation, so is that when we want to hook um, such a certificate, certificate pinning implementation is that um, the implementation varies between different um, applications and also sometimes even on um, different application versions. And what does it mean? It means so far we have uh, one target application and one version, and we have our hooking and it's working fine. And then uh, there are some updates into the application uh, logic, and at some point we have to adjust our hooking so that our um, certificate pinning hooking is working again. And then it's a new version and we have to do it again and again and again. And this is a problem. Um, of course, it's a little bit different um, when the certificate pinning is implemented using a library. It might be not that big deal, but um, in some cases it's really implemented in, in the application itself, and which means that we have to um, at first, in order to um, make our hooking work again, we have to reverse the target application. And then, after we analyze the certificate pinning through reversing, we are able to adjust our hooking that is able to work again. And this brought us to the idea <clears throat> when we already have to. Um, Attack the application in order to um, make the certificate pinning work, work working again. Um, we have um, other also other possibilities, and one other possibility might be um, to directly um, extract the decrypted payload of the TLS screen, because it's a little bit easier, at least when we're only interested in analyzing the decrypted TLS payload, and this was the birth of FreeTap, and in the beginning, we thought about implementing FreeTap only for Android because on Android uh, devices, its um, certificate pinning is happening quite often, at least on the application I, I analyzed. And therefore, we did in the beginning a survey on how the SSL. Uh, which kind of SSL libraries are used on Android systems. For this purpose, we analyze 5,000 different Android applications from the Android App Store. So this means we um, had a look at the different um, categories of applications from the App Store and analyzed the topmost 100 applications there and had a look which kind of SSL implementation is used there. And uh, what we found out is that um, almost 90% of this, those Android applications, they were using Boring SSL. Boring SSL is a fork from OpenSSL developed by Google. And then almost 9% are using GMS for OpenSSL, which is quite similar to Boring SSL. And only one percentage or a little bit less than one percentage as using some other um, TLS library implementations. And um, this brought us to the idea to develop um, FreeTap, which is just hooking into um, the SSL libraries in order to either uh, extract the TLS encryption keys or um, in saving the decrypted TLS payload as a PCAP. And that's what is FreeTap doing. And now we will have a look how FreeTap is working. So <clears throat> we have our target application. And um, this target application at one point decides to create a TLS collection. 
And um, the, this application is then um, initiating a TLS handshake. And it's doing it through its use TLS library. And then, of course, the, after the handshake, the TLS stream is established. After this TLS stream is established, um, this application uses then the provided read and write functions um, from its using TLS library in order to read the um, payload from the TLS stream or to write to it. And what is good, at least um, from our purpose, is that um, what is provided through the read and write functions is um, in plain text. So um, that means when we hook into those read and write functions, we are able to get directly to the decrypted not decrypted to the plain, plain text payload. And that's actually what FreeTab is doing. And this is not only doing for one open SSL library, we are supporting many open SSL libraries and um, the libraries we are supporting is still increasing. And <clears throat> how does it look uh, when we really work with FreeTab? So, um, FreeTab supports uh, iOS, macOS, Windows, Linux, and Android, and it works almost the same. So we have FreeTab, we download it just from GitHub, and can directly use it. And um, when we are using it, we just can say, okay, if I have a mobile application, I just have to pass the M parameter. And in this case, I want to show how we can um, ex extract uh, the decrypted TS payload as a PCAP. And uh, this is doing this way. And then we have to say, okay, I want to um, want the decrypted TS payload of this target application. And then we're starting FreeTab. FreeTab is then beginning to start with trying to identify the used uh, TLS shared library. After it identifies the used shared um, SSL library, it's applying its hooking. And in this case, we identified, okay, it's boring SSL and um, hooked into it. And whenever now um, the Target application decides to read um, from its used TLS uh, sockets or it wants to write to the TLS socket, we are able to um, write it to this PCAP file. And that's it. At one some point, we just press Ctrl C to abort our analyze, and now we have our and we can see it, uh, see everything in plain text and can analyze it in a way we want. And <clears throat> this brings us directly to the first uh, demo. For this case, I'm using Zoom. Um, yeah, for this case, I have an Android device. As well, you can see it. I have just to unlock it and start Zoom. Here, yeah, Zoom. Now I have to open the terminal, and you can already see what I will soon enter here. So we have the M parameter um, for with the mobile device, in our case, Android. And um, what you don't see now is um, FreeTap is based on Frida. This means and Frida server needs to be run on the target device and it has to be rooted. There are cases where we can work with it without rooting, but um, this I might ask in the Q&A. So, and then we are, have this PK file and now we have a new um, feature which is called enable spawn gating which means just um, sometimes applications decides to spawn new processes. And with this parameter, we are able to follow 
and the free tech bookings also into this uh, new processes. And that's actually all we are doing. I now start free tap. And it's starting, and you already see it. Now I need to start the Zoom session, which I prepared on another computer. Okay, I'm starting it. And now I need to connect to the session. This will take just some seconds. And now, you, during I am trying to connect to this session, you already saw that something popped up. This is a new process. Zoom decides to start, and FreeTap is still hooking it. Now I am entering the meeting password, and that's it. So. Now I'm inside this um, Zoom session, and just as an example I prepared, we just send some text messages like, I Ifcon. I'm not sure really if you can see it, but never mind, I just sent it. And um, this is some text. And just in case we see a little bit more text in the PCAP later on, um, I will now stop free tap. It stopped. And I stop, of course, the Zoom session as well. So now I have this PCAP. And uh, we want to analyze it and see is FreeTap really working or not. So, just let me open Wireshark. This is another PCAP open. And now we have this new PCAP, Zoom decrypted PCAP.PCAP. Maybe not the best name. So. Is this a real pickup name or okay. now a little bit confused? This is always with live demos. Uh, I just want to ensure if this file is not that big. In the past, it was a little bit bigger. It seemed maybe I have to make a rerun of it. Just to ensure, follow, screen. OK, we can see it's not actually what I want to show you, um, because here we see only a little bit of its TLS connections. I'm not sure why this ha happens. Um, maybe. Oh, oh, I was wrong. Maybe. Ah, I see the problem. It's a filter of it. Okay. Um, everything worked as I expected. I was just confused. So, and um, because I prepared this example, um, when we look for this um, string into the um, TCP payload, I find this connection. Um, Wireshark, in this case, is just saying it's SSL because it looks at the used um, port number, which is 443, which is HTTPS. But we um, created this PCAP with FreeTap, therefore it's decrypted. And if I say now follow TCP stream, we see it's um, at least it looks decrypted. Now I have to look for the string. So, and this is this kind of text. And if you are quite similar with um, uh, 
graphic analysis, um, reverse engineering, or so on, you might already think hmm, it might be base field base 64. And actually, it is for this purpose. I'm opening now um, Cyberchef. Maybe some of you know it. And um, I also prepared that. And we see this is from our connection. And uh, what you, we can see now here is um, there seems like the a version number, like a sender name. So the mobile device what was called Pixel 2 XL. OK, this is a device itself. And then we say some, something like encrypted content. Then we see like something like the um, encryption algorithm which was used and then the encrypted message. And of course, it was not the text I sent. And um, you can see it was sent through a chat message. And um, what we know by that is um, at some point, uh, Zoom uh, claims they are using end-to-end -end encryption. And on this, and you might ask yourself, are they really using end-to-end -end encryption? This is not a full proof if they are using end-to-end -end encryption, but at least we can see that the text message I sent was somehow encrypted. Um, if it's really uh, strong end-to-end -end encryption or not, I can't say. I didn't investigate it that far. But at least we could see um, that there's some encryption um, applied, which might only be decrypted by the target um, receiver. OK, this was the first demo. And um, now I already told you something about um, TLS key extraction, there's another feature which FreeTel provides. Because in some cases, you don't want to see only the TLS decrypted payload. You might see the whole traffic and application is sending. And in those cases, you have the possibility to do your um, network capture on your own. And FreeTel is then helping you to extract the TLS keys. And how is FreeTap using it? Again, it's just hooking the TLS libraries, and now it's extracting the TLS keys. And um, some forensic network investigation toolkits um, offer support to SSL keylog files, which is a well-known uh, format which enables um, this kind of tools to identify TLS streams and use the uh, appropriate TLS key in order to decrypt the TLS stream. And how it looks like, so for instance, when we have Wireshark, we have our encrypted TCP capture, and not TCP capture, uh, network capture. We can then um, decide it, OK, we want to provide it with an SSL keylog file. And an SSL keylog file looks that way. So we have at first part is uh, um, client random, which is used in order to identify the TS stream. And then the next part is the used um, key in order to decrypt it. And when we provide um, Wireshark with this SSL keylog file, which we can extract with FreeTap, we are able to decrypt everything. And how is FreeTap using it? It's more or less um, the same. Again, we have our uh, machine where we have FreeTap. We then um, have to start our target application. We need um, enough permissions, of course, in order to um, apply our hooking there. And um, if it's a mobile device, we need, uh, in most cases, uh, Frida server running there. And then we just have to tell Frida, OK, you want to extract um, now keys and just have to provide a name where the TS keys should be written to. And then again, Frida is starting and is trying to identify the use SSL library, and after that, it's applying the, the 
appropriate cookies for that in order to extract the TLS keys. And whenever now a TLS connection is happening, um, FreeTap is extracting these TLS keys to the file here, which we then can provide to, um, for instance, to Wireshark. And this brings us directly to our next demo. Now we use not an Android device, we now use an iOS device. Um, I plug it in. Again, open the terminal. The first thing I need to do here, because we want to show the um, um, extraction of the of the keys, I need to start the capture. So I just want to remove the all traces. And now I just start TCP dump on this uh, device and write everything to uh, the speaker. Now it's starting. And then I can just start uh, Tab. Now, in order to hook Discord, now we're writing the keys to Discord keys dot lock, and for the Discord application, and the new parameter is minus v for webbers, so that we can see what's happening now. And um, now I have the iOS device, and I will just uh, send some text there again. That is in showcase, as you can see. Now it found, okay, there was boring SSL use for um, using TLS, and we can see that um, uh, now I sent a picture, and it seems like when I sent a picture, it's sending, is using another um, TLS connection, or at least a new TLS encryption key, and that's got extracted as well. And, that's actually it from the what FreeTap is doing. So I stop the analysis here and stop the um, trace of it. Now let's have a look at the Discord keys. You can see there are two keys inside there. Now I need to download. Um, to download the um, PCAP file from the iPhone. So, now I downloaded it. Uh, again, I'm opening Wireshark. This opening this new file, and there we have I can't see it. Okay. Seems like I'm Download, I just have to copy it. Um, this code is okay. This is us. And now we have the PCAP, we're opening it. We don't need that. <clears throat> now we see we just have a normal TLS, uh, not normal capture with um, at least some TLS traffic inside it. And we don't see that there's something that's um, decrypted because there are no encryption keys provided by now. 
Now I can go to Wireshark, depending on which system. It might be in different location, but um, we have to find the preferences and then go to protocols and then look for the ALS. Now I go to the keylog file, opening it, and voila, I see something gets decrypted. And what can we see here? You can see that we have something here. And I can look into this JSON object and see what was really sending there. And we see, um, so I sent a picture which was uh, requested by this request. And then at some point we will see, for instance, this time. Then we see, oh, it's a JPEG file. We can open it. They show packet bytes. And I just send a random picture. I don't ask me what it is, but we can see um, there was some um, picture sent uh, through Discord. And because we decrypted, uh, we captured, extracted the TLS keys we are, were able to decrypt everything. And that's from this live demo back to the slides. And this is another example how we could use uh, FreeTap to help our investigations. And um, this brings us directly to our conclusion and to round up everything. Um, so the main two main purposes where FreeTap could help you, this is either by um, extracting the TLS keys or in um, decrypting the TLS payload and write this decrypted TLS payload or this plain text um, from a TLS connection directly to a PCAP. And um, that's what FreeTap does. Um, there's still some work left. Um, so for some operating systems, not all features of the certain SSL libraries are supported, but we are working on that. Completely overview of the supported SSL libraries you can see at our GitHub repository. And um, there are some other features we want to add uh, soon. For instance, um, when you have to work with Windows malware especially, um, you often find that the encryption libraries or especially something like SL libraries um, statically, static linked uh, into the target application. And currently FreeTap is only able to working with uh, dynamic link libraries, which means if the for instance, OpenSSL would be statically linked, free to work. And that's what we are working on. And also, we want for the case that this SSL library you are dealing with is not currently supported by FreeTap, we want to add a feature that you are able to prototype the read, write, and SSL key extraction functions on your own so that um, you can help FreeTap um, first on your own. And then, of course, um, for the cases you want to alter the uh, decrypted payload, we want to develop an integration with memory method proxy and verb suite. Yeah. That's it. Um, thanks for your time. And um, if you have questions, Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Daniel. Um, we did have some audio issues. Your, your connection's a little bit spotty. Um, I didn't interrupt because we could still hear you and understand you. Um, I want to give you the option if during the Q&A, uh, if you want to try to call in for the questions or if you want to just do them as we've been doing it. Uh, what I could do, um, maybe everything gets a little better if I turn off my webcam. Might yeah. that? 
we can definitely try that. Uh, so is the connection now better or is it um, it's it's the same. Um, it's just it's a little bit spotty, so we can still understand. But um, I actually the only reason I didn't stop you earlier was because I really didn't get any complaints. I had to have somebody else log on to make sure that um, it wasn't that it wasn't just my connection. Um, but mm -hmm. like I said, we could still understand you. So um, we can get to the questions though, because we can still understand you. Um, and just a reminder for everybody, you can you know ask your questions in the questions panel. And um, if you can't stay, I would remind you to do what I do in the marketing -y stuff, which is fill out the survey and let us know. Which yes, I'm sorry, there were audio problems. Um, okay, so first question: How does FreeTap identify the TLS library, and how does it identify the functions needed to be hooked? Does it rely on hard-coded characteristics such as strings or fixed offsets? Um, actually, on most um, TLS libraries, they're um, exported from the library itself. So we just have to look, for instance, on OpenSSL and Boring SSL. It's like SSL underscore read and underscore write, and we just have to identify this function by its name. And obviously, obviously it's not working if the binary is stripped and we don't find the symbols during runtime. But uh, at least on the benign applications we analyze, it wasn't a problem. And even on malware, on Android systems, it wasn't either a problem. Um, yeah, so FreeTap is actually just looking for symbols in the shared libraries, which we uh, provided it um, on ourselves. And um, that's the way it's identifying the functions and then just uh, applying the hooks there. Great. Um... Did this answer the question? I think so, uh, but if we didn't, please re-enter anything that we didn't address. <laughs> um, hey, Daniel, thanks for the great presentation. What benefits would an integration with, and I'm sorry, I am not, this is not my word, a world, um, MIT um, proxy bring, um, AFAC, <laughs> uh, the, sorry. Um, I wish also, you could read this um, question. Um, the can also um, also log the TLS keys and already decrypt the traffic. Would that mean the client wouldn't need to trust the MIDM proxy certificate? Um, I'm not sure I get the question right. So um, one, um, it might be a problem. As far as I know, uh, many in the middle proxy is only supporting HTTPS. So that means um, on most applications we're analyzing the TLS traffic uh, might be HTTPS, but it don't have to be. And what we want to ensure is that we have a transparent proxy using FreeTap, which is integrated with the UI of um, and in the middle proxy that we either don't need uh, a certificate, yes, that's true, and we, we weren't able to use the UI of um, men in the middle proxy that we are able to alter um, the payload uh, regardless if it's HTTPS or not. And um, maybe it's a big task and it's really a future work and not the main focus, of course, of FreeTap. But at some point, we want to integrate it, set free that. Great. Um, is there an ETA for burp? What it, is an burp T? Uh, estimated time of arrival. Like, so when do you think burp oh, okay. um, might be integrated? Actually, the, um, um, we are not sure what we want to do at first. Um, and this case, um, we as a developer have to decide um, what we want to develop at first, then in the middle proxy or the upstream. So we want to develop at first only one of this uh, time, 
and I don't think um, this will, will happen this year. I would expect at first we want to improve uh, other support of other SSL libraries so that we um, handle almost every SSL library out there for all major platforms. And after that, we want to do the um, um, birth or man in the middle proxy support. And this will happen, I would say, sometime next year. But there's no real um, estimated time. There's only one feature we want to add. Great. Um, can it intercept HSTS tag set, HTTP uh, strict transport security? I don't think this should be a problem because um, the only thing what we are doing with uh, FreeTap is that we are hooking the KS um, read and write functions. And that way we don't do anything with HTTP. Whatever that's happening there is happening there. We're just copying what is there decrypted into NPCAP. And therefore, this shouldn't be a problem. Great. Um, and we'll do one more question. What's the best way to integrate FreeTap in an existing setup where Frida scripts are already used to hook? Android apps. Um, what, what was the name? I, um, like free what? Uh, we're free to scripts. So what's the best way to integrate FreeTap in an existing setup where ah. free to scripts are already used to hook Android apps? Ah, no, I guess um, the best way. Um, so FreeTap, um, if you have a framework like Objection or Excalibur or some other frameworks, you might use um, the standalone version of FreeTap, which you could, could be downloaded uh, from the GitHub page. Or if you're only interested in the hooking itself, you could use the underscore SSL underscore or dot log file. And all our hooking is compile into this JavaScript file. Um, this way um, you could integrate it. Of course, then you need a, a look. Need, currently, you need a look into um, the Python file where we see how we handle certain requests. Um, maybe this is a good point um, that we should um, Write to a little write. Do write a little write up, which shows how you could free tap in your own uh, tool chain to make for use your life a little bit easier. Um, so that's a good point. Thank you. <clears throat> awesome. Um, and I actually will ask one more: Is this able to um, geotag information from the decryption of packages? Oh, hmm. I'm actually not sure. I don't think so, um, but I'm really not sure because um, when we're writing the decrypted payload into the PCAP, what we're writing out there, we are only writing um, the IP frame and uh, the IP payload and the TCP payload and um, nothing below. I don't know how the geotagging is working. I would say it depends on the geotagging implementation, of course. Um, I never tried this, therefore I can only guess. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so thank you so much, Daniel, for being here and for everybody else who basically joined us and spent your time with us. If you have any additional questions um, and in the chat, I just posted Daniel's email address as well as um, the GitHub link. So and I'll also send that um, with the email with the video. So if you need to reference it, you'll get that. Um, if you also wanted to download the slides, you can download them in the handout section. We did post them before the webinar. Uh, 
So thank you. We currently do have one more OSDFCon webinar scheduled next month. It's March 29th. Bob Cardell is going to be talking about log parser as a forensic tool. So um, if you haven't registered for that yet, uh, please do. You can always check uh, the upcoming webinars at osdfcon.org slash webinars. And lastly, again, please please fill out the survey because we love to hear what you have to say. That's it. Thank you so much again for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next time. And thanks again, Daniel. Bye guys. Thank you.